Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to go back to the future with Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212. Okay, so the Hyper 212 from Cooler Master is probably the legendary CPU cooler for uh, Intel and AMD platforms over probably the last best part of 10 years, maybe even slightly longer. This cooler has been the sort of go-to cooler for most enthusiasts and beginners due to its excellent cooling, its quiet performance and its basic good value for money. So this is the Hyper 212 Evo, which has been around for a long time, which was again an improvement on the original 212. But now there's a new contender on the block, which is the 212 LED. Now let's take a look inside the box and see what we get and see what's new and improved. So this is the 212 LED, the new improved version. Uh, this particular model is in red, as you can see, as I was planning on doing a red build. Unfortunately, that's turned to a blue build, so well, the unboxing goes on anyway. This is uh, still the same good old Hyper 212. It's still the same four heat pipe cooler with uh, six mil heat pipes. And it's still got the same 120 mil fixings. But what we've got now in the new updated versions, now that the AMD Ryzen chips are out, we've also got AM4 compatibility. So I'm not sure what that's gonna look like whether it's going to be as fiddly as the original AM3 and AM3 Plus, which was a nightmare and had you taken the motherboard out or uh, forcing case manufacturers to create cutouts so you could get access to the back of the board. I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, this is the first time I've had a look at this, so let's see what we get in the box. So first of all, the Hyper 212 LED pamphlet, warranty guide and instruction manual. Let's not have a look at that quite yet. Don't want to spoil the surprise. Uh, this is our fixings kit. We'll have a look at that in a minute because hopefully the new AM4 cooler is going to be in there and it's going to be completely different from any other AM4 cooler and it's going to be nice and easy to use because some of them can be a real, real struggle. Let's have a look at the fan itself to begin with. Okay, so there it is. This is the, yep. Yeah. It looks absolutely identical, I think, to, I don't know, there is, a, there is a, a slight change, I'm not sure if you can notice it. Now, take notice of the fans which are on these because I've changed this one for a deep cool fan uh, for RPM issues, but uh, can you notice the difference? Now, sideways on, identical. Don't think there's any difference in the design whatsoever. Uh, side on, top on. Uh, looks like exactly the same layout and spin around. So from the base, now there is a bit of a change there. They seem to have increased the surface area and have spaced out the heat pipes. So as you can see there, they're all sandwiched together. Whereas here we've got a, a definite uh, gap in between, which actually, even though that's got the tab on there, that feels like one flat, uh, one flat surface area, whereas that actually does feel ridged. So whether or not that's gonna be uh, still as an effective a cooler remains to be seen. We'll see what happens with there. But the main difference being is this, this base plate. As you can see, this base plate, completely square piece of aluminum above it, whereas this one is more machined looking and has got additional holes on the side for attaching mountains to, which I guess are gonna be in there. So we'll have a look at those in a minute. But from this angle, you see there's a, a slit cut out of the, the fins which are on the top there, which again, those fins are an improvement on the single solid block, which you can see on there. I'll try and get some close-ups of this uh, in the B-roll so you can see what exactly what I'm talking about if it's not very clear on the camera. But there's definitely, definitely an improved design on this uh, sort of uh, CPU contact area. I'm not too sure about the, the base where they need, that should have been machined a little flatter so you can't feel the ridges, but hopefully uh, a good uh, helping of heat paste as per my uh, previous video will be helpful there. But those fins definitely seem like they're gonna aid cooling and the slot on the top is very reminiscent of some of the early AM3 Plus coolers. So I'm assuming from this, the new uh, 
clamp for AM4 is going to be very much like the old AM2 and AM3 ones, which is going to be a, a spring clip. So let's have a look and see what we get. So, moment of truth. Oh, what's this? So we've got a new uh, back plate, which seems to have AMD stamped on that side and Intel stamped on that side. So, and those seem to be uh, movable. So I'm not sure what that's for, but we'll have a look at the instructions in a minute. Got your usual rubber grommets in there and the uh, traditional little hexagonal screw adapter for putting the, uh, the nuts through the back of the motherboard. So there's a little tool bag or tool kit. Got your extra fan brackets. So if you want to have a push-pull configuration, you can add an additional fan onto the back using these and have another fan. So air pulling in one side, pushing out the other to increase the airflow. So you get those included. And here, it, oh, hang on. There's some uh, odd looking standoffs, not too sure what they're for, but we'll take a look at those in a minute. And here are the brackets. Now, looking at this immediately, I can see what I believe is the AM3 and AM4 bracket. So, there we go. That is all it took. Well, and the redesign of the base. So there we go, you just pick that up. So at a guess, I would say you'd be looking that the fan would be in a face down configuration like it was with the, uh, the other AM3 plus boards. And this goes in and twists around in there, I guess. Oh, I hate these brackets. I really, really wish they would uh, think of a better way of doing this. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty centralized, I think, on both sides. I don't know if you can get and make that out. So there's about the same sort of gap each side. So you clamp down the front bit over the uh, the, CPT, the AMD CPU retention um, piece of plastic, the lug, and then using the back, like the old traditional fans, you just have it loose and then tighten it up in a little spring clip. So that is going to be what holds the uh, the cooler to your motherboard. Not as sturdy as obviously some of the back plates etc that we've been used to seeing. So if you're going to build one of these systems and you're going to put one of these in and you're going to be shipping it um, somewhere, either UK, abroad, wherever you're going to be shipping, um, whether or not it would get to its destination without snapping off the lugs is... Uh, well, I suppose it remains to be seen. These are still very new uh, designs, and I guess if it's packed okay and you've got some styrofoam in there just so the CPU doesn't move around too much, sorry, the CPU cooler doesn't move around too much, then you should be okay. But um, not the greatest of designs, I'm not overly happy. And I guess another problem which I can envisage already is if you're using AM4 or AM3 for that matter with this configuration. Because you're going to have your motherboard, it's difficult for me to explain, but basically your fan's going to be like that. If you're looking inside of your system, your fan's going to be like that, rather than being like that, exhausting air at the back of the case. It's going to be like that, exhausting air up to the top of the case. So depending where your CPU is on the motherboard, uh, this side here, you're definitely going to have some issues, I would imagine, with uh, RAM clearance. So if you've got RGB RAM or uh, RAM with heat spreaders on, I can see this definitely being an issue, so uh, make sure you measure and measure again before you buy one of these just to make sure it's not going to obscure or obstruct any RAM. Now I'm going to be doing a build with this later in the new Cooler Master Light, Light, Cooler Master Light 5 case. Oh, struggling with words today. Um, and this is planned to go in there as well with a uh, AM3 FX8350, which is going to be sort of a rejuvenating build. So be sure to check that out. Um, there should be a link up here somewhere for it after it's done. But I'm going to try and use this in that machine. Um, and we'll see if we have any problems with RAM clearance on there. So if you want to see the installation of this fan, check out that video and you can see it there. So far in this video, all I'm going to be doing is this unboxing and quick first look. 
and I think pretty much that covers it. So we're going to leave it there. If you want to see the installation of this, then check out the other video. Uh, but I'm Mike. This has been Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This has been the Cuda Master Hyper 212 LED, and we will see you again in the very next video. Thanks for watching.